So we're gearing up for a wedding today that was actually a little bit further away than usual. And so we got a hotel the night before. This is the morning of the wedding. And, and what that means is that we've got all of our gear very nicely packed and ready to go, a little bit more organized than we usually are on the morning before a wedding. Um, and it gives me enough time to kind of do a little video and to run through everything that we would take with us to a larger wedding I've done before. We've talked about it before, I haven't really shown it all, and I've talked and shown um, at a smaller wedding some of the gear that we bring along. But now let's talk about um, all of the stuff that we're going to bring along with us to a wedding. Let's start with Christina's bag first. That's got some of the more exciting gear in it. I'm holding in my hand the checklist that we use, and I, um, I'll put the, a link to this down below. I think we're going to reorganize this checklist, but we print this every single time that we go out to shoot a wedding, and we run through it and make sure that we're leaving the house with everything that is on this list. Uh, so let's just dive right in, though, to Christina's bag. So first thing we're pulling out here is 5D Mark three with the 8512. Just can't say enough good things about these L lenses from Canon and you know it makes sense because they cost thousands of dollars but they are gorgeous. It's not just that they are sharper, uh, the color rendition and the contrast, the reduced chromatic aberration and flaring uh, that you get from these more expensive lenses is really, really nice. We've talked about it before in our wedding videos. If you can't afford these, it's definitely should be in your budget uh, or work it into your budget if you're shooting weddings seriously uh, to rent them uh, some of the time. This is on a uh, black rapid strap, the, the female sized black rapid strap. Over here we have 5D Mark II, and right now this has the 51 II on. Christina only recently got this uh, lens. She, you know, she'd been almost shooting. She almost shoots the whole wedding with the either the 85 or the 70 to 200, which we'll look at in just a second. And um, which, you know, both of those do a really nice job, but sometimes you want to go a little bit wider, and the 51 II allows you to do that. Still get lovely, lovely images out of the 5D Mark II. Its focus is just a little bit slower, and that is on another black rapid strap. She's actually borrowing my black rapid strap for that, and we'll talk about what I'm using in just a second. 35 1.4, just a nice lens for when you want to go even a little bit wider. Then we have a pile of speed lights. These are all the 600 RTs, and I'll tell you what, these are really nice because they have the RT stands for radio transmitter. Radio transmitter is built in. Why do we have so many? Well, first you want backups. Uh, if anything is important at the wedding that you are going to be using, you should have a backup for it. Second is uh, during dancing, we often set up two flashes opposite the dance floor from where we're shooting. Um, and use those as rim lights. I've mentioned that before and I have a small diagram that shows it. Basically, the flash is on a stand on the other side from where we're shooting. It's set on manual to its lowest power and when we fire our flash, it responds and it just kind of rims the people and um, really separates them from the background. As I talked about in a recent video of layering your images, this is just one of those ways it really kind of sets your subject apart from the background and gives it a much more nicer 3D look. Lots and lots of batteries. These are all rechargeable batteries in here, of course. Don't use anything else inside these. These are in loops, um, and they do a good job, and we have spares enough for all of them. 70-200 F2.8IS. Really, you know, this is a wedding staple. It's just a great lens during the ceremony. This is pretty much what's on our cameras 90% uh, of the time because you don't want to be too intrusive. I do see some photographers that shoot with shorter length lenses. They get right up in there, um, and we just don't do that. So we like to stay back a little bit. Battery grip for the 5D Mark III. Two batteries in here, and you can easily shoot the whole a whole 12 hour wedding without having to change as long as your batteries are healthy and we have seen that with heavy use even the um, official Canon batteries um, maybe a year to two years before you should start thinking about having more replacements on hand so the newest is a tri flash bracket so a flash can go in each one of these cold shoes uh, run a bounce umbrella through and for group photos if the light isn't good if the natural light isn't good we have a fallback for that and then over here we got some spare lens caps, body caps, battery bits, and in here we have memory cards. I've talked about this before, but I'll talk about it again. We each have a different color memory card. 
all of the cards get formatted in the camera that they're going to be used and when they're ready to go they're placed face up. Uh, the 5D Mark III you can shoot to both compact flash and SD cards. We have been shooting full RAWs to both as backup. We had one little scare um, but with recovery software everything was fine so uh, that was enough to say let's shoot full RAWs to both the compact flash and the SD card. This stays uh, tied to a lens exchanger bag which I'll show in a second so you'll always know where it is. Uh, you know you can't stress enough the pictures that you're taking and putting on there are extremely important. That's it for inside the bag. Then we have up here tons of more batteries. Some of these will go into something I'll show you in a second. Canon battery, Canon battery, Canon battery, Canon battery. Gels for putting on the flash for matching the room light temperature. And we can talk about that more in a future video. And I think that's it in that bag. I don't think there's anything else important up in here. This is a this is the think tank bag. This is their Airport International version 2. It is a rolling bag and it is just fantastic. It holds all this gear, really beefy wheels at the bottom of it. Um, and you know, I honestly I balked a little bit at spending so much on expensive camera bags. I said I'm broke. I've spent all this money on gear, but I've tried the cheap camera bags and you end up uh, replacing them much faster than you would something like this. Let's look in my bag right now. This big empty hole is where the My 5D Mark III plus 24 to 70 is. It's missing because it's being used to film right now. I now do have a 70 to 200. If you watched my earlier videos, I was just renting it, but looking at the number of weddings I was going to shoot this year plus some other events, it did make financial sense to go ahead and buy and oh, hopefully have it it will pay for itself over renting costs in the next two to three years. Little LED uh, light. This is really nice sometimes. This is 30 bucks. Uh, I'll put a link to this down below too. One of my uh, best purchases, I think, as far as value goes. It um, is great when you want to throw in a little bit of constant light, and we've used it um, for various things. Sometimes some ring shots, some artistic uh, couple shots in a darkened place. It's also really nice because it helps your camera get focus, and so we can use it that way as well, as opposed to um, the camera trying to focus and then firing a flash. 580 EX, this is mostly backup, um, and we bring it along. This, well, right here is a little intervalometer, uh, or, you know, setting the camera up for bulb mode. There's just been a couple of times where we wish we brought it, so we've started bringing it, and we haven't used it yet since since we bring it, but it takes up so little room. So I mentioned that Christina was borrowing my black rapid strap. I'll show this in just a second. Um, I am still testing this and I really like it. This is part of the cotton carrier package system. Uh, it's kind of a holster system for your camera. No strap around your neck. I'll show that more in just a moment. And then the 51.4, which again, great value lens. Certainly not as nice as the 51.2, but it is way, way cheaper and much more affordable. And then, as I said, I have my color uh, memory card wallet that keeps them all safe in there. And I'm actually now shooting on a 164 compact flash, and so most of these 16s are uh, backups. I probably will not go through the whole 64 in a wedding unless it's a really long one. Up in here, I've got a shower cap to use as emergency. Uh, rain protection. We have a little lens cleaning. A lot of people ask me about lens cleaning cloths. Um, this is one of these little ones that fits right into its neoprene bag and it works quite nicely. Circular polarizer filters. Pretty rarely do I use these or pull these out at a wedding, but there may be times when I have them. Spare tripod plate. This is another piece of the cotton carrier strap system. And I'll show this in more detail in a second. And then up top, I have my handy dandy Ziploc bag. You never know when you need those. And that was a little rubber washers that flopped out that don't actually get used during the wedding at all. In here is the reflective fabric for a sun bounce, which is a 
ginormous reflector that we use occasionally. Uh, Christina loves using natural light and having a reflector around gives you just a little bit more control of that natural light. The rest of the tubing and everything that keeps this, let me show you just how big this is. The rest of the tubing and everything that keeps it all together is um, out in the car and it's got a white side and a silver side. And we use the white side primarily unless the light levels are getting really low and then you might use the silver side. Also not seen here is um, two tripods. Uh, pretty rarely use the tripods during a wedding. It's so funny, I see a lot of people say, oh, you must have a tripod for a wedding. And I, the number of times that we've used a tripod, I can count on one hand. Long exposure night pictures of the venue is really the only time. Group photos uh, just doesn't work well. Although I have seen some people say that using a tripod sets you apart as the photographer uh, if you're struggling and if you're having trouble using a loud voice and getting people to notice you, tripods do help. But we pretty rarely use that. So we don't tote these bags with us the whole time at the wedding. Um, they are nearby, but what we have uh, at the whole time at the wedding, and I have shown these before as well, these are also Think Tank. And nope, we're not sponsored by Think Tank. They just make really good stuff. This is the lens exchanger bag, and it's very simple. Just got three kind of slots for lenses or flashes. And this is what is strapped to us pretty much the most of the wedding. This is where our little memory card wallets go. Uh, it works perfectly for that. I love that it's got these little Velcro silencers here, so you can just flip it up and down without making any noise. Or if you want that added protection, it will stick there. And on the back side of it is room. I keep a spare battery in there, spare pack of trip, uh, double A's for flashes, and maybe the car keys. And we both have one, and to tell them apart, mine has a little bit of orange stripe here, so we know which one we're grabbing. It's really important to stay organized during the wedding. Our bags definitely do get a little bit messier as the night goes on, but there are times where you need to run back and grab something, and you want to make sure that you're doing that very, very quickly. A few more items that are on the checklist that I didn't mention because they're not in the bags. Um, a step ladder is brought along larger group pictures. It's nice to be able to get just a little bit more of some uh, elevation sometimes. Uh, in loop chargers don't always come with us, but when night before, we want to make sure everything is completely charged. That charges a whole rack of in loops very quickly, very nicely. Spare can and battery charger. Um, extra umbrellas. We have both uh, weather umbrellas. Uh, cute ones for the bride and groom to have with them if there's some rain that makes for cute pictures. Um, and then umbrellas to protect us, and then of course umbrellas for shooting through. Right now we're using a 36 inch, or no, sorry, 60 inch bounce umbrella, but we also have some uh, smaller shoot through umbrellas as well. Don't use those too often, but it's nice to have them along. Food and water we bring along. It's important to stay hydrated uh, during the wedding. And uh, one of the other items that are on our, is on our checklist but isn't actually an item is to sync the camera times. It's really a big pain in the butt after the fact if you've been shooting with more than one camera to get your times all sunk up. So it's important that before you go, pick one camera, look at what time it is, set the other ones to that exact same time within the second. One other chunk of this checklist that I didn't talk about but I think is important is that we do bring along a... 24 inch iMac to do a same day slideshow. I cannot tell you how impressed people are when they get to see um, a handful, I think it's usually somewhere between 30 and 60 pictures um, from earlier in the day during the reception. That's usually shown dinner time reception depending on the timeline. It is a little bit of a hustle um, to get it done and if you were a solo shooter I'm not sure you could do it but if you're working with one other person um, it is, it's certainly manageable um, and really really nice to be able to do that. So that's everything on the checklist. Now I said I was going to show the peak capture or the cotton carrier, sorry peak capture is different, cotton carrier system now. So the cotton carrier makes a several different kind of like holster attachment systems. I love my Black Rapid strap but by the end of the evening having a strap across one shoulder for the Black Rapid and another strap across for the lens exchanger bag that I showed a minute ago it, it gets old and so I've been looking for a kind of a strapless system and this uh, cotton carrier system seems really nice. Consists of this padded, comfortable belt right here uh, and a holster piece. And you could attach this to uh, your own belt if you were that willing to believe that it was strong enough. 
Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and throw it on here. It gets Velcroed and strapped on. Let me just make sure I have this right side up and right here. So we can sit right there against that. Velcro goes down on that side. And I've now used this at four weddings. So I think that right there tells you a lot um, that I've been happy to continue to use it. They do actually sell a strap that will then go across you as well, but I haven't been using that. One downside is it looks a little goofy. This is a safety strap. I'll show you how to use that in just a second. I'm going to tuck it in there if it's out of the way. So on this holster piece is this Lexan plastic loop. You attach to the bottom of your camera. Now there's two different ways you can do this. You can have just this little guy attached or you can attach this bigger plate which happens to fit my um, Benro plates. And so I can't remember the actual manufacturer now of this size that it comes from or the Arc Swiss, the Arca Swiss compatible plate. So this is what I really like about this is that I can pop it onto the tripod or I can pop it into the holster. So it's got this little um, I don't know, metal doodad, and what you do is you slide it in sideways and then let the camera drop, and it sits right there like that. And as I said, it looks a little um, goofy, but it's really nice to be able to do that, have nothing across my shoulders during the wedding. One downside that I will say is that when you have a black rabbit strap or other strap, you basically lower your camera until it, it's snug and then you can let go of it. This takes about a half to a second longer because you have to say, all right, let me make sure I got it in there. And so it takes a little bit longer. You're not just kind of dropping your camera at your side. But for me right now, I'm really happy with the trade-off. And with the 70, to, I've, I've done this with the 70 to 200 and the 5D Mark III. That's a lot of weight. This is all very firm. Doesn't feel like it's going to fall at all. There is an extra little button you have to press here for the whole belt to come off. And as I mentioned, there is a safety strap that this, I'm actually using Christina's camera because this is my camera's filming. I have a little loop right here that it attaches into. So if for some reason you didn't pop it in correctly, it's hard to. I've never not gotten it in correctly. If you didn't pop it in correctly, though, um, you could you can have the strap on here, and that gives you a little bit of extra safety. They make several others. I have some to give away. Um, I need to talk about them, and then come up with some fun way to give them away. So keep watching for that. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be back to talk about more wedding type stuff soon. Thanks so much for watching.